I'm Brian Lilly. Eyes to see and ears to hear. That is the topic of tonight's byline. We are confronting a global terrorism problem, and for the most part, that threat, that problem, emanates from Islam. Whether we're talking about attacks in Ottawa, Fort Hood, New York, London, Madrid, in places like Libya, the Philippines, and India, or across Iraq and Syria, the common thread is Islam and Islamicism. Yet 13 years after 9-11, with countless victims piled up on the altar of Islamicism, some people cannot stand to hear that there is any connection at all between terrorism and Islam. Right now, in Parliament, a Senate committee is studying security, security threats to Canada. Over the past two weeks, two people well known to this audience have come forward to speak before the committee, Tarek Fatah and Salim Mansour. Both of these men are Muslim. Both have spoken out against radical Islam. Listen, though, to the reaction that Fatah received from Liberal Senator Grant Mitchell when he went before the committee and said part of the problem is what's being taught in the mosques in Canada. I find that the implication that every single imam in this country is, is, uh, is, is inciting people to in violence, which is in a sense what you no. said, because the first no. prayer, the first prayer. No, don't put words in my mouth, okay. Senator. My second Please. question. So my first question is, have you, have you been to every mosque in the country? I have what you say is preaching on Friday, a prayer that starts a prayer that, that, that talks about a battle with non-Muslim people? That, ladies and gentlemen, is just stunning. Tarek Fatah has been sounding the alarm about radical Islam for years, and the reaction of this senator, supposedly in the middle of doing a study of security threats, is simply to say, but not all mosques are bad. Well, of course, Tarek Fatah hadn't said that, but he did let Senator Mitchell have it. I resent the fact that you're teaching me my religion, number one. You would have to live 65 years of my life in 10 years in Saudi Arabia and 30 years in Pakistan and 25 years here to dare to tell me what is Islam. Number two, I did not say they incite violence. That is words that you are putting in my mouth. You should not do that. You're a senator. You should be the role model not to change my words. Number three, I suggested that every Friday prayer is preceded by a prayer asking for the defeat of the infidel at the hands of the Muslims. And I stand by it, sir. And that prayer is going on for 1,400 years. Well, this week, Salim Mansour also appeared before the committee. He delivered his own message. Salim and Tarek have different ideas, different thoughts, but they do agree that there is a problem inside Canada's mosques. There is the exposure of Muslims on Fridays during communal prayers to sermonizing from pulpits by imams of political situations in Muslim lands and Muslims as victims of the U.S. foreign policy of Jews and Zionism and of Hindus in India. This is a combustible atmosphere. Now, Mansour also said that when police forces and government agencies partner with questionable mosques without doing their homework, it gives legitimacy to groups that shouldn't get it. Any legitimacy given to them as a matter of community or political outreach only further entrench the practitioners of Islamism disguised as religion and spreading their ideology through mosques. So what's the reaction to these words of warning? Once again, Senator Mitchell chided the messenger, essentially telling Mansour that he couldn't say mosques were the problem. You make a, a very provocative statement and um, and it's not consistent in, with my experience although I'm not Muslim and I don't I haven't been to mosque in the way that you have but I, I know many wonderful um, amazing remarkable Muslim people Canadians and otherwise who uh, as I've said before here are just like us they love their kids they want a future for them and they want to build this country so when you say that 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 mosques are the incubators of Islamism, surely you're not saying that they all are. Unreal. It was stunning to watch as Mansour calmly explained that the fusion of mosque and the political movement known as the Muslim Brotherhood was a real danger. He then read a lengthy quote from Hassan al-Banna, who founded the Muslim Brotherhood in 1928 in Egypt. It is this movement that has spawned Hamas, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and so many more current-day terror groups. So this is a man that if you are studying security threats like the one before this committee, you should at least know his name. But after Mansour read that quote, listen to what came out of the mouth of Senator Mitchell. It just seems, I mean, this 
person that you're quoting doesn't live in Canada and is talking about mosques all over the world, I would assume. Um, but there's billions and billions of, of non-radicalized Muslims who go to mosque, uh, you know, frequently, pray five times a day. That, ladies and gentlemen, is mind-blowing. He said, this gentleman doesn't live in Canada. No, he doesn't. He's dead. He was assassinated in 1949, but his very dangerous ideas live on. Look, I'm picking on Senator Mitchell here, but he's not alone. Far too many people want to live in this Pollyanna world where there's no problems that can't be solved without well, a little bit more multiculturalism, maybe a rousing rendition of Kumbaya. But the world is darker than that. The world is more dangerous than that. We need people like Senator Mitchell to open their eyes, open their ears, and open their minds to, to the messages of people like Salim Mansour and Tarek Fattah. And we need them to do it before it's too late. And that's the byline.